welcome students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Uh, this here video is on chapter 19, the sales, excise, and property taxes. Um, it's the theory video. And to be quite honest, it's going to be a rather uh, short video and also a short chapter. So uh, since we're only talking about sales, excise, and property taxes, and since most of us know what a sales tax is, um, let me get to it. Um, and remember, if you don't understand something, go ahead and rewind and watch the video again. And if you still don't understand, then you know, contact an instructor either by telephone or email. Okay, so when we're looking at sales tax, um, I mean, we all know, as an example, if we go to uh, the store and you know you buy a sweater for a hundred dollars, and let's say your tax rate is in your state is six percent. That means you'll pay six dollars in tax plus the one hundred dollars for the sweater. So when you hand the cashier, you know, one hundred and twenty dollars, right? Um, you're going to get fourteen dollars back. You hand her one hundred twenty. The total cost is one hundred and six because it's one hundred plus the six dollars for tax. So you'll end up getting fourteen dollars back. So I mean, we all know and understand that because we live that every single day. Okay. Um, the thing that we, uh, uh, when it comes to sales tax, what we have to pay attention to is, you know, there is no sales tax on shipping charges. So, um, let's say I, uh, purchase something for a thousand dollars and I have 6% in sales tax. So that's going to be, uh, $60 in sales tax. Okay. So my invoice is going to show the $1,000. Um, and then we're going to have the tax. So this is retail. And then we're going to have tax of $60. So uh, the total, or I should say subtotal, is going to be $1,060. Okay. And then let's say there's $300 in shipping. So that means my total invoice is going to be 1360 and that's what you'll pay for the item okay now i mean notice that shipping came after tax okay it's not before tax so you can think about that you know think about it in visually mental it and, and visualize it in your mind that you know here's your tax line okay and everything above it is taxable anything below it is not taxable well shipping comes below the line right if you want to have a visual you know and retail price is above the line okay. so um, that's just a, a visual way of trying to remember it all right um, but one of the important things is that let's say um, yeah you bought something for a thousand well you bought items for a thousand dollars okay and let's say you have to return two hundred two hundred dollars of it okay um you know when you get a credit back you're going to get a credit for the retail amount plus the tax which six percent of uh two hundred dollars is twelve dollars so you'll get twelve dollars back for tax two hundred dollars for retail but you don't get anything back for shipping okay Unless, of course, there was some kind of agreement where it's prorated or whatever have you. But um, uh, as far as a credit memo is concerned, you're not going to get back uh, your shipping on it unless, like I said, you're uh, prorated. Okay. So the important thing is, is that shipping is not taxable. Okay. So now um, the other thing that you might want to be concerned with here is, well, how do we know what our actual sales is, our actual sales are? So if I have my total sales, and I can divide that by one plus the tax rate. So if my tax rate is six percent, okay, that means one plus zero point zero six, because remember, percentage six percent. We move the decimal place two to the left, so our decimal is 0 0.06, all right, in decimal form. So we have uh, our total sales 
let's just say our total sales are, I don't know, I'm just going to make something up here, 100,000, okay? And in the denominator, we have 1.06. So I'm going to divide 100,000 by 1.06 in order to know what my actual sales were at retail, okay? That means um, before we take out our tax. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Right, so... Uh, that's a, a useful uh, formula to, to be thinking about. I mean, honestly, I don't um, remember the formula. Um, what I do in my head is I kind of say, okay, and I'm just use a little bit easier numbers here. If I paid $106 for something, okay, and I know my tax rate is 6%, um, you know, I, I try to think to myself, well, you know, if I multiplied by 1.06, that means I'm going to get greater than 1.06, so I know I can't uh, multiply it by 1.06. So I have to end up, I have to divide by 1.06 in order to get a number smaller than 106, and that will end up being $100, okay? So, you know, just mentally, again, if you're multiplying, because I'm multiplying by, you know, 106 times 1 is 106. If I'm multiplying it by something greater than 1, that means my answer has to be a greater than 106, and I don't want it to be greater than 106, because I want to find out what my actual sales were before I took out the tax, so I know I have to divide, okay? And so that's pretty much it about sales tax. Um, let's move on to excise tax. You know, excise tax is nothing more than an additional tax on specific items. So if I had something for $1,000 and I had 6% in sales tax, I'm going to end up paying um, $1,060. And then I might have an additional, say, 3% in excise tax. So it's just an additional tax on specific items. Okay, so it's not like you pay excise tax on anything that you go, you know, you go in the grocery store. You're not paying an excise tax on anything in the grocery store. But you might pay an excise tax on something like an antique. Okay, um, if you went to an antique dealer or something that's being shipped. Uh, so um, there's specific instances where you have that. So I'd end up taking 3% of the 1000 which would be an additional um, $30, right? So it's not on the it's not tax on tax here, okay? Maybe I should rewrite this so you so it's not as confusing. Um, if you're going to take an ex, have an additional excise tax, so then you're taking a thousand times three percent, which would be another thirty dollars, okay? So and I should have maybe wrote that like that. So um, so then you take your thousand plus your $60 in sales, plus your $30 in excise tax. And your total invoice would be 1090 And then, of course, if you had shipping and handling, it would come after that, right? Add it to, let's say it's $210 for shipping. So then we'd end up with a, a total invoice of 1300 right? So excise tax is similar to sales tax, except for the fact that it's only applied against specific items and it's uh, applied in addition to the uh, sales tax. So if you have a problem that says, um, let's just erase all of this. I mean, if you have to show it and you would, you may have to show it just like I did here, right? Just like I did here. Um, showing the sales tax and excise tax but if i purchase something for a thousand and i have the three percent for excise and six percent in sales okay i could add those up and say nine percent and take a thousand times my nine percent get ninety dollars okay and then add that to the thousand and i end up with the same thing a thousand ninety okay because I can, be, you know, I can add these two together and just do the one tax rate. But if I'm showing it on an invoice, I'd show the thousand, and then I'd show sixty for sales, and I'd show thirty for excise. 
and end up with 1,090. Okay. All right. Let's see here. So let's see here. I have uh, just property tax to do. Um, I'm actually going to stop here because it's a 10 minutes and I'll pick up the next video and cover the property tax. Okay.